Everybody wants to go fast on their bike or fast air, whether you're a beginner or a really experienced racer. We're always looking to go quicker. And when products come onto the market that others have been seen to go quick on them, there's a fascination, isn't there? I call this helmet the disturbance in the force, a helmet that was launched in 2012 and then was discontinued by 2014, but yet now in 2021 is almost on all podium heads in time trial races across the country. Fascinating. What is it? Of course, it's the pop temper helmet and that's why you're in the video. You want to learn a little bit more about it. Why have I got one? I've got a great relationship with POC, so I thought I'll get one sent across, we'll try it out, see how it works. Okay, let's dive into it. So, disturbance in the force is a little bit of a pun, yeah? Because it looks like something from Star Wars. And it, POC fundamentally are a safety company that have high-end design, you know, from skiing, mountain biking, into road biking, time trialing, track cycling, they've done the lot. But the actual helmet itself is designed for Gustav Larsson, the famous Swedish time trialist. Now Gustav got silver in the time trial in the 2008 Olympics, so when it came round to 2012, Pock designed the helmet. He didn't medal, but he still did well. But the helmet was designed for him, and what I mean by that, it was worked around his spinal curvature, his position to make him go quicker. Now, by 2014, helmets had gone smaller, Cask had brought out the Bambino and Team Sky were ripping up records all over the place. Now, what happened is the wonderful Dan Bingham and his work that he did with the Danish pursuit team in 2020, when they not only broke the world record once, but they did it twice and then three times, all wearing this helmet. And it was always looked upon as the Danish team had used equipment that anyone could get it came off the shelf. Now, the UCI have a regulation, what they call the, the commercial availability of equipment that anyone should be able to get what the pros are wearing. And this helmet was in all of their heads. And I have seen it now at national championships. I've seen it at the top of podiums, right across the spectrum of the time trial world. So what is it about it that makes it so special? Well, it's not the price, because it's going to retail around about £350. Is it the design? Well, some people have often referred to it as the ugliest helmet in cycling. I actually think it's quite stunning. And as a Star Wars fan, <laughs> I, I love it. Now, I love the colour of this one. I deliberately asked for the orange. Why? Visibility. A lot of time trials happen sort of early morning or late evening and visibility is crucial. So when we look at the helmet, remember your head position is one of the first points of contact into that wind and you need to create clean air. I see lots of riders, they'll spend a lot of money on a disc wheel and I'll say to them, are you sure you've got clean air by the time it hits your disc wheel? Because your front wheel, your front tyre, your hand position and your head position are paramount to how clean that air is. And you will go a lot more aero with clean air from the onset of its journey across you. So what you can see with this helmet, first of all, is the large vents in the front. On the front of a helmet, we get a high build-up of pressure. And the idea is that the air will flow and it will pass over. With this high build-up of pressure, POC have used this to help with ventilation. So even if you're doing a 10 mile, a 25, a 50, or the horrendous 100 mile time trial, you're going to need that ventilation. And anyone who's ridden with a non-vented aero helmet will know that they'll get visor problems, it will steam up, and they will overheat. Clever, but simple. But can you see with this helmet, what happens is it flares out. What it's trying to do is to allow air to flow over the shoulders. So this is very important to your position on the bike. So it's not going to work for everyone. But then, why spend £350 if you don't know it's going to work for you? Well, in this video, I'm hopefully I can share with you a few pointers that may make it an advantage for you. But let's look at it first of all and what you get in the box. Obviously, I think, you know, this hard case is fantastic. I use a lot of uh, 
different helmets and I keep the cardboard box for them but the helmet sits inside the cardboard box and it gets a bit damaged. Having the hard case for this, that's, that's super important I think. Pock, yeah, well done. That's a 10 out of 10 for that. Now you also get, we've got a couple of visors, we've got a, a grey one and we've got the clear or what they call the replacement. Living in Scotland I probably think the clear one will be used more. Uh, this is a Velcro attachment, so I'm used to magnetic attachments for visors. Now, remember, a visor with or without is something that's a personal preference. Aero gains, visor on, visor off, there is minimal gains there. Uh, some people like the visor, me personally, I like the visor, I like to protect my eyes. Uh, does it steam up? No, I've never had trouble with it. But some people don't really want a visor. This is a Velcro attachment, so as I said, I'm used to magnetic, so they clip on. I've heard people say that, oh, the Velcro can take a little bit of time. It's got a little nose uh, cut out, and you place it on. We're going to press that down onto the Velcro. Look, that goes on really simple. That's on there, pretty secure already. Really easy to attach, and that's the clear one. Now, you've also got a number of inserts with the helmet. This is a medium to large, 55 to 58, so it's going to fit my big head. Now these inserts, I know people have said, oh that doesn't come with any instructions, but come on, it's an insert, all you've got to do is uh, clip it in. So we've got a couple of real thick ones, if you've got a smaller head for this design, I'm going to know that I've got <laughs> a head that's going to fit easily inside the 55 to 58. So I'm going to use the small one. So basically you're just going to lead it with the front of the helmet. There is Velcro inside the helmet. What you've got to make sure is when you're putting the inserts in, don't cover up the vents unless you're wanting to. One of these will allow you to, to do a bit of a cover up, but I'm going to leave those vents open because I want to experience the full thing. You can cut these pads to make them fit. Now, one of the design features of this helmet, it hasn't got a ratchet at the back. It's got a clip that we're gonna slide. So when we put the helmet on, we're gonna slide it into position so that she fits. Okay, let's try it on. Okay, that fits really quite snug. So at the back, we would just push, clip. You'll probably hear it clip. in there. Maybe one more. That feels good. It's going to take a little bit of trial and error. Still got the ticket on it, but I'll just give you an idea what it's like outside of the box. That's actually quite snug. I'll probably make it a little bit tighter. Let's climb on the bike. Uh, I've just been doing some uh, time trialing with someone. I'm not in any gear, but you get the idea. So when I say about individual design, our spine has got its own biomechanical shape. We're all slightly different. So 10 people my height are gonna have different length of torso, but they're also gonna have a different curvature of the back. And it's the alignment of the helmet and the back that's gonna help us with that smoothness, creating the clean air. Okay, so let's just climb on and have a look. So. We'll just pedal in the training shoes at the moment and we'll get down. So I can feel the helmet on my back. This is not my ideal position, but that feels not too bad. I've got good vision. If I was to place my head down in this position with this high front end, you can see that the helmet, that's not going to work in that position for me. So because the helmet wants to work with your shoulders, this is a helmet that ideally is going to help people who are going to tuck in their shoulders. So we know that by tucking in our head, we can get more aero. So we're going to have to tuck right in and down and get pulled right in with those nice high hands. I think this is going to be quite good for me. Let's just pop that off. So that's it. The pork temper caused more uh, debate, I would say, than any other helmet. Is it for you? 
Well, if you're a rider who can really get their head tucked in, okay? So by bringing the shoulders up, high hands, Remember, hands in head position, you want to decrease frontal load. So it's not about getting as low as possible on a bike. It's about decreasing the contact points that are going to cause airflow to change direction. Hey, if that video was of any use to you, why not give it the thumbs up and consider subscribing if reviews and training tips is something that you're looking for. I've got lots to share with you. Remember, stay safe, keep smiling, keep spinning. Anyone can train hard. There's only a few of us can train smart.